Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're talking about OMG particle. Yes, that's right, there's a particle code, oh my god. Why? Well, you're about to find out in this video, so welcome to What A Man. So recently I was actually traveling in China and I took this uh, relatively simple travel adapter with me that you know weighs about I don't know 100 grams it's relatively light but imagine I threw this at you not that I should but still um, and threw it so fast that it would be moving at around 95 kilometers per hour or about 60 miles per hour and it hit you like in an arm or something it would be pretty painful right okay so this thing is relatively big imagine I condense this into a size of a single atom and threw it at you with the same amount of energy. That's essentially what an OMG particle is. It is a particle, an atom or a, an electron or even um, something like a simple molecule that is traveling so fast through our galaxy that when it actually is stopped by something, it produces as much energy as basically that thing hitting you in an arm um, at about 95 kilometers per hour, which is approximately 48 joules if you want to know the actual uh, energy produced. Anyway, so what exactly is it? And most importantly, how is it actually formed? Well, let's actually first talk about something similar, which is called cosmic rays. So once in a while, in a very energetic event in our universe, like for example, supernova that you see on the screen right now, um, we actually um, have these particles that accelerate to such a speed that it's very, very close to the speed of light. Very often, these particles that are usually referred to as cosmic rays um, basically come to Earth and they hit Earth and they even can be detected by various uh, cosmic ray detectors. But most importantly, they actually produce a lot of energy on contact because it's these uh, ele electrons and protons and neutrons that move ridiculously fast. And so because of the speed, they actually have a lot of uh, kinetic energy. We have these detectors like this one right here that are capable of not just uh, detecting them, but even predicting where they came from. Even though it's actually kind of difficult because these particles are often charged. So they travel in these unusual and predictable patterns. So you normally have to have another, um, well, normally light, uh, like a gamma ray, for example, like you'll see in a few seconds to actually try to estimate where these uh, cosmic rays came from. So this straight line right here, that's basically gamma rays that are not affected by uh, any kind of electrical interaction. So right here, you can actually see how uh, these cosmic rays usually develop this speed. During a supernova, for example, they kind of get bounced around a lot uh, by various interactions, and eventually they reach a speed high enough to escape the um, actual attraction of the electromagnetic forces inside the supernova. And so they start traveling really fast uh, at like 99.999% of the speed of light. Also, once in a while, these uh, very fast moving particles actually interact with other matter and they can produce gamma rays as well. And so this is one of the ways that those gamma rays are produced when a, or a cosmic ray uh, or basically a particle hits another fast moving particle. And so in reality, planet Earth is pretty much from every direction is constantly being bombarded by these cosmic rays that are actually kind of dangerous. But uh, our atmosphere protects us from most of this radiation, so that's why Basically, flying too much in an airplane is not good for you because you do get um, a lot of these cosmic rays uh, hitting your body. But that's not really what we're talking about today, because these cosmic rays have a much bigger, much stronger brother. The so-called OMG particle, because when it was discovered in 1991, that's basically what the scientists said, OMG. They could not understand it. It was so tremendously energetic that it just did not make absolutely any sense. It was about 40 million times more powerful than anything we produced um, in the uh, particle accelerators here on Earth, and it was way beyond any cosmic ray. As a matter of fact, it was moving so fast and so close to the speed of light that it would take a photon, uh, basically an object moving at the speed of light, to only gain about one centimeter for every 200,000 years of travel. That's how fast this particle is moving. And at this speed, it's 
actually experiencing so many relativistic effects that basically if it were to pass by our planet Earth, in other words, if it flew right next to it, the Earth itself would only seem about 0.03 millimeters in radius. It would just be a flat pancake because of the way that um, everything contracts as you move closer and closer to the speed of light. It would also take less than a second for this particle from its time pers perspective to reach the closest star to us, which is Alpha Centauri. And what's more, at this tremendous speed, from the time perspective of the particle, it would actually reach the center of our galaxy in just a few seconds. It would be there like this. So obviously nothing can really travel this fast without um, somehow getting all this energy. And as of today, we have absolutely no explanation for how these particles got so much energy. We've discovered almost a hundred of these so far since 1991. And we are absolutely dumbfounded and absolutely confused about what actually created them. There is nothing in the universe, not even a black hole, that seems to have the power to produce these unusually strong, unusually fast moving particles. Because basically to accelerate these particles to such velocities, just like with the cosmic rays, you would need a tremendous amount of energy and also a lot and a lot of magnetic energy, magnetic field. And so here, this is how cosmic rays are made, but it's just not enough energy to make these unusual OMG particles. We then also thought maybe just maybe these are born inside the center of the galaxies, like for example, these so-called active galactic nuclear galaxies, similar to the one on the screen called Centaurus A. This one is only a few million years, uh, light years away from us, so this is the closest one we know of. So essentially all of this material um, orbiting around a supermassive black hole creating the accretion disk would eventually get thrown out and create the two jets that you saw on the screen previously. And some of those jets potentially may have some energy to generate something similar to um, an OMG particle, except that we don't really have any such galaxies close to us. And all of these particles seem to be coming uh, to our system, to our planet, from relatively nearby in cosmic terms. The only such galaxy is this right here, Centaurus A. And unfortunately, none of these particles seems, seem to have come from this direction. And we definitely don't have anything powerful enough in our own galaxy to generate these OMG particles. So once again, we're left with pretty much nothing. It cannot be simple black holes. Supermassive black holes uh, need to have very active galactic nuclei to even have a chance to generate these. And if it's some sort of an unusual phenomenon we've never discovered before, we definitely don't even know where to start looking. So for these unusual OMG particles, 100 of which we discovered so far, we definitely have no answer. We have no uh, possibility of explaining their origin and we definitely don't really even know where to start looking. Do you think you can figure it out? Well. If so, maybe post it in the comments below. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. And hopefully now, well, actually don't really know much more about OMG particles because we don't know anything about them. But maybe in some future videos, we'll actually have some information to share. In either case though, do subscribe, click that bell button to be notified about future videos and maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out and as always, bye-bye.